it's Vanessa from Unmasked. There's some really chilling newly leaked ring cam footage for us to discuss and a few interesting updates to the timeline leading up to the murders. But first, before we dive into this video, please hit the like, subscribe, and set the notification bell to all so you'll be notified of my new videos on this case and others. Okay, so let's start with the newly leaked ring cam footage during the time of the murders. I can't 100% verify its authenticity, obviously, but I've watched it many, many times at this point. And in my opinion, visually, and as far as times matching up to what we know, it does seem that it's most likely legitimate. I see no reason to doubt that it is ring cam footage from Linda Lane from the night of the Idaho Four murders and at that specific time. The footage was leaked via the YouTube channel Veritas Equitas. I hope I'm saying that right. And it's a camera from 1330 Linda Lane, which is approximately three tenths of a mile from the house on King Road. Just to get you oriented because the streets are kind of confusing back there. Here is 1330 Linda Lane. As you can see, it has a view of the Queen Road Apartments parking lot. Then, of course, next to the Queen Road Apartments is the house where the murders took place at 1122 King Road. There are two videos up so far. The one we're going to be looking at is from the early morning hours of November 13th, 2022. This particular footage starts at 3.59 a.m. and goes for about an hour. I was shocked at some of what we're able to see and hear in this video. For best listening, you definitely need decent earbuds and I would watch it on a laptop or a TV. As we know, this is the specific hour time frame surrounding the murders. There's another video that was put up today that shows the 1 a.m. to 2 a.m. time frame. I'm really hoping they'll add the 3 a.m. to 4 a.m. window because that's also important, probably as important as this one, but I guess we'll see. And as you're watching this video, look to the upper left of the screen. That is the direction of the King Road house. So let's go through some of this video and match it up with the critical parts of the probable cause affidavit. Of course, every time I say Brian Koberger's name, it is allegedly. So in the PCA, it reads that Koberger allegedly made three passes around the King Road house beginning at 3.29 a.m. As I said, this video starts at 3.59 a.m. So that's where we're starting. So I'm guessing that this is because everyone was still up and moving around the house and he was most likely circling to wait for everyone to go to sleep. The timeline given to investigators by the surviving roommates indicated that everyone was in their rooms by 4 a.m. We also know that Xana had ordered DoorDash and that it was delivered at approximately 4 a.m. We also know, according to interviews with Xana's friends, that this was normal behavior for her. So one thing before we start, these times are all approximate. Investigators have revealed that they have multiple cameras with footage from that night, and each camera could easily be off by a minute or two. So it's important to keep that in mind as we go through this. I'll tell you in a minute why I think it was actually a few minutes after 4 a.m. when the DoorDash driver came and left. We'll get there in just a second. The affidavit doesn't give the exact time that the DoorDash driver leaves or where they stop the car to deliver Xana's food. This next part is extremely important for what we're gonna be watching. So I'm gonna read it from the PCA verbatim. So the PCA reads that Brian's vehicle is seen, quote, entering the area a fourth time at approximately 4.04 a.m. It can be seen driving eastbound on King Road, stopping and turning around in front of 500 Queen Road, number 52, and driving back westbound on King Road. When the suspect's vehicle is in front of the King Road residence, it appeared to unsuccessfully attempt to park or turn around in the road. The vehicle then continued to the intersection of Queen Road and King Road, where it can be seen completing a three-point turn and then driving eastbound again down Queen Road. For those of you saying that this video is worthless and doesn't really show anything, I could not disagree with you more. And I'm not going by the timestamps of the video, I'm going by the time that's displayed in the upper left corner. 
So on the video at 40520, you can hear a car coming down Queen Road and then the headlights appear in the frame. At 40540, you can clearly see that it's the side view of a white sedan passing by the camera. The car then comes to a stop and sits there for about 10 seconds before turning around. That car is turning around in front of the Queen Road Apartments. Then at 40608, the turn is completed and the car drives out of sight and out of the sight of the camera. So at 407, more lights appear from a different vehicle driving down Queen Road and you can, a few seconds later, you can hear a car lock in the distance. I don't know if Brian would lock his car or not, but it's definitely possible. He is OCD. It's habit. I really wouldn't doubt if it's him. You can see from this camera footage that there's this fence that separates these two parking areas and that we're looking at the street below, which again is Queen Road. What's important here and what's really difficult to dispute is the location and the timestamp in the PCA matches exactly what we're seeing in this video. Not only that, but it's none other than a white sedan that looks very much like a Hyundai Elantra. As the other car is driving up the road, the headlights actually kind of shine through the windows. I do believe that we are witnessing, allegedly of course, Brian Koberger turning around in front of the Queen Apartments, number 52, pausing for about 10 or 11 seconds, either because he's waiting for the DoorDash driver to leave or possibly trying to work up the courage to do what he's there to do, and then heading towards the King Road house before parking his car for the last time before the murders. So let me first say that if that is Brian's car, and I personally believe that it is, that actually makes the window of time quite a bit smaller. And like I said, the vehicle pauses for 10 to 11 seconds at the top of the street, goes out of view at 406, heads towards King Road at 407, and a few seconds later, you hear a car lock. He would still need to get to the home and get inside the home. Unless I missed something, we don't know exactly where he parked yet. In my opinion, he most likely parked behind the house in that small lot, and then was able to kind of use the cloak of the thick woods walked down through the forest, and likely entered the house through the back sliding glass door. I know there's also been talk that it could possibly have been the window. Personally, it doesn't make sense to me that he would enter through the window down there. It's more complicated, and there are more opportunities to accidentally knock something over or just make noise. So after watching this video, in my opinion, he most likely enters the home closer to 4.09 or even 4.10 a.m then for the most part it all goes completely quiet on the video watching this was really disturbing i had chills watching the time tick by after 407 a.m just knowing that maddie kaylee ethan and xana only had minutes left to live and they have no idea of what pure evil is driving around looking for a parking spot we know that investigators said that Xana was watching TikTok on her phone at 4.12 a.m. She had just eaten, so I'd imagine that she was just laying in bed, scrolling through videos, while the killer was upstairs murdering Maddie and Kaylee. With the timeline and the information we know, I think it's most likely that it was Xana that Dylan overheard saying, there's someone here. Maybe when she went to the kitchen to put her bag of food there we don't know yet however that would make sense that she might have gotten up gone to the kitchen put her bag up and when she was in that part of the house she may have heard the commotion above her said that someone was there gone back woken ethan up and of course everything played out as it did of course, investigators also have the cameras from Pullman, Washington that show a white sedan matching the description of Brian's vehicle at an intersection less than a mile away from Brian's apartment at 2.44 a.m. The car is heading towards Moscow. 
It's later seen returning to that same intersection near his apartment at 5.27 a.m. We also have the fact that his phone turns off around the same time frame of the murders. Let's also not forget, of course, that at the time of the murders, Brian's car had a Pennsylvania plate. It was only on the rear as Pennsylvania does not require a front plate. Washington does require both front and back plates and the white sedan that's caught on camera multiple times in that area of the King Road house is missing a front plate. The PCA also reads that at approximately 4.17 a.m., a security camera located less than 50 feet from Xana's bedroom picked up distorted audio of what sounded like voices or a whimper followed by a loud thud. A dog can also be heard barking numerous times starting at 4.17 a.m. I couldn't hear any of those things on this video. I think it might be a little bit too far, but maybe some of you did. If so, please let me know in comments. We know that around 4.17 a.m., Dylan looks out her door for the third time and sees a man dressed all in black, except for his quote-unquote bushy eyebrows, headed towards the kitchen and out the back door. That's a very specific time and an otherwise non-specific timeline. So I'm assuming that that time is coming from when the commotion is heard on the neighbor's camera. So by the time he makes it outside, up the hill, through the woods, and back to his car, it could be pretty close to 4.19 or 4.20 a.m. This lines up with exactly what you can hear on the video. According to investigators, Brian's vehicle is then seen leaving the area of the King Road residence at approximately 4.20 a.m. at a high rate of speed. The next time he's caught on camera is heading southbound on Walenta Drive. So when you're watching this video at 4.21.02, I heard what sounded to me like a car door closing in the distance. It's not very loud or clear. I don't know if you guys want to go back and listen for yourselves. I'm going to have timestamps in the description. That is what it sounded like to me. So in this video from 4.21.20 to 4.21.55, it sounds to me like a car starting up and driving away at a high rate of speed. However, on this particular video, we can't see the car leave. We can only hear it. I know there's a lot of discussion around the black SUV that starts up around 422 AM. And there's also a lot of discussion about a guy that can be seen running off to the left around the same time. In my personal opinion, those two things are completely unrelated to the murders and this is after Brian has left the area. They have the white Elantra on camera, multiple cameras, fleeing the area in multiple locations. I also guarantee you that they have video that is much clearer than this one, and with all of the other evidence, cell phone pings, etc., they are pretty sure of his routes. Just seeing how closely that this video matches with the PCA and what we know is pretty convincing. So like I said earlier, I have the link to the video with the timestamps in the description. Please let me know in comments if you were able to catch anything that I missed. So what do you guys think? Do you think it is Brian's vehicle in the Linda Lane footage? And does this timeline change any of your thoughts on what happened that night? Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe and see you next video.